Are we on? Darling, why do you always surprise mommy? Ladies and gentlemen, I, I must tell you, I had planned to come down to Sheridan Square just a second. Huh? I had planned to come down to Sheridan Square today, but I didn't expect my entire crew here. We have an entire staff of people. There's Eric, and there's Mr. Rick, Mr. Rick, and Michael, and Michael, and the only person who isn't here today is Lou Maletta. What a pity. Anyway, <laughs> darlings, we're going on a little stroll of Christopher Street. We're going to go down. There's so many things I have to tell you about. Mummy was on vacation, so we apologize for all those awful reruns. Weren't they edited just terribly, darlings? But anyway, I forgive them. I forgive my staff. All is forgiven. Mummy is going to do a live performance over at the Cat Club on October 2nd. I'll tell you more about that. Darlings, you must listen to Mummy. During our little commercial break, you must get a pad of paper and a pencil. And speaking of pads of papers and pencils, I hope we have the microphone on, do we? I'm so sorry that so many of my viewers' hands have fallen off this summer. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You've all obviously had lawnmower accidents or things with blenders in which your hands have fallen off, and that's why you haven't written me. <sighs> that's why I haven't gotten any fan mail. But I forgive you all, and I know that if you apply yourselves, you can write with your stumps. So, darling Michael, why don't we go down to the street? We'll stroll down there. I think it's time just for a station break of some sort. Something very intelligent will be sold to, to us, I'm sure. So we'll be right back, and then we'll go for a stroll down Christopher Street to the pier before Hurricane, what is it, Elena, hits Manhattan. We'll be right back, darlings. Au revoir. So we're back. Darlings, it's Christopher Street. It's a Sunday afternoon. This is a two-part program, darlings. And we're walking down Christopher Street as we have before. And you know, there are so many sights on Christopher Street above and beyond. The people, the denizens, as it were, the residents, or whatever it is. Oh, there's Rev 2. Rev 2 is providing... Oh, I must stop. Rev 2 is providing the wardrobe for our own beloved news reporter, George Trahanas, who wears their clothes. I think that's too divine. You know... Olivia Negron is really too beautiful to live, speaking of our newsroom. I'm very upset with her. She's the co-anchor woman now. I don't know who does her clothes, probably Mr. Phyllis or someone like that. There's so many talented people around here. Um, but you know, darlings, Mummy has been dying to tell you. It's so dangerous to walk backwards, isn't it, in high heels? Really, I hope that uh, Mayor Koch has been fixing the manhole covers lately. No, but I wanted to tell you, hello, Riv2, hello, darlings, they're waving. Don't throw socks at Mummy, please. Um, Mummy wanted to tell you about so many things in the village which are so lovely. You know, I was out for dinner with Mr. Rick last night and it was quite lovely. Darling, how are you? Bonjour, mes amis. You look marvelous. And you're having a refreshment. Is that a can of champagne? It is. Come along, darling. Um, as I was saying... I love you. <laughs> thank you, dear. Really, and you know the diamond ring he gave me. I should remember to send thank you cards. It's such a sign of good breeding. Um, as I was saying... Michael, darling, you must watch for railings when you walk with a handheld camera. Um, Mr. Rick and I were out for dinner last night, and we ate at a divine restaurant. We ate at the restaurant called the Paris Commune, which is at 411, uh, 411 Bank Street. And it was wonderful there. It was just so lovely. The owner is a dear school chum of mine. We went to private school together. He's just lovely. And the 411, do any of you remember the 411? Let's stop for a moment. Do any of you remember the 411? The Yes, 411 Bleecker Street. The 411 was a restaurant that catered, well, mostly to men with friends. Men with friends, darling. They were mostly single, except they seemed to be in the company of other friends of theirs who were always terribly attractive and often muscular. But it since has become the Paris Commune. It's quite lovely. Are we coming, Michael? <laughs> Michael suddenly dozed off at the camera. Um, it was quite, it's a lovely restaurant now, and you must go there. They're having dinners every night. They serve brunch, which is too divine. You're always going to brunch there and seeing Sandy Dennis or Sandy Duncan or Sandy someone or the other. Um, what else can I tell you about? Oh, darlings, we must stop for a moment. Let's be completely honest. Broadway has died completely. Joe Papp was right. He killed Broadway, and it's now rigor mortis is heading in. But darlings, there are some plays running that you must go see. Now, Mr. Rick will remind me. Um, the Wonder Years. The Wonder Years, written by David Lee, is playing at Don't Tell Mama, and that's too divine. It's running between now and September 28th. You must go see that, darlings. It's too wonderful for us baby boomers. And, Michael, you're drifting. You're wandering away from me. What's happening? There's no slashing moment. There's motion. There's just this wandering off. All right. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, and what else? Oh, 
Jerry Sternbach has written a wonderful show, a wonderful show, which is also playing at Don't Tell Mamas, called Insert Foot. Darlings, you must go see that. It's simply divine. And, of course, my dear friend, my dear private school chum, uh, Charles Bush, is running to packed houses at the um, Provincetown Playhouse with coma and um, oh, lesbian vampires of Sodom or something. It, it's so divine, I just can't describe it, darlings. You must go see these plays. There are creative things happening in the city. Even though Broadway is dead, even though Ed Koch is going to be re-elected, there are still creative things going on in the city. Um, darlings, I think it's time for a station break. Michael, darling, if you keep slashing at your neck, your head will come off. Um, <laughs> that's, the, that's sign language for Sybil, you must cut, you must cut. What if I don't cut someday? Or what if I sharpen Michael's fingernails to raise his sharpness and he sort of has a little accident, that's the end of him. Well, darlings, we'll be right back. Oh my, look, Michael, can you get a shot of the black sky? Elena's veered north. The weather, the weather department never knows what it's talking about. Elena is striking Manhattan. Anyway, darlings, we'll be back in just a minute. We're going to brave that pier one way or another. If mummy gets hit by lightning, that's all there is to it. I got two chairs here. Two chairs for Saturday night. Sacks and bass. <laughs> darlings, isn't this thunderstorm simply too divine? It's just so thrilling. We didn't make it to the pier, as you can see. You know, this storm reminds me of something. It reminds me of a song. Oh, I know. Oh, the weather outside is frightful, but here it's so delightful. And though the winds may blow, let it snow, let it... No, we'll forget that song. Anyway, um, darlings, I have a little note for you. You know, we all here in Manhattan have wondered for months, why does Lou Maletta put that, that, that Dusty the Weather Girl on? Dusty the Weather Girl from Dallas. What possible use could a weather report from Dallas, which has nothing to do with the nation, it's always Dallas's weather, delayed two weeks, so we're finding out what Dallas was doing two weeks ago. It's not even any use to Dallas. Dusty, darling, I'm sorry to tell you this, but your career is over. You're about as charming a personality on TV as, well, I won't say it. Anyway, darlings, it's pouring out. We're going to try and stay dry under the Lucille Lortel theater canopy. Lucille was an old school chum of mine. She was wonderful. Um, we have some theater announcements. Mr. Rick is shaking his hands at me and signaling away. Darlings, Mummy is doing a live performance. I'm not sure if you can hear this. I hope you can. Mummy is doing a live performance at the Cat Club, that C-A-T Club, on 13th Street at 4th Avenue. <laughs> Are we on? Darlings, did you see what happened? <laughs> Mummy's entire crew was struck by lightning. <laughs> I was, evidently I was reading Dusty to Filth and I did not know she was so well connected. I apologize, Dusty, for my critique of your lovely programming, your, your brilliant weather reports. Uh, I don't know what to tell you right now. My, my new producer looks like Michael Goodwin is no longer with us. He looks like a pan of quiche right now. It's quite disturbing. I personally feel like Elizabeth Ashley. Remember when she was in the hospital? <laughs> she used to have a morning appointment for her depression with a toaster and a glass of water all the time. It's like tingly all over and strange memory loss. Anyway, I think I was telling you about my, my, um, my performance at the Cat Club, um, which I've forgotten the telephone number. <laughs> Can you imagine? Um, I'm sure it'll come back to me. They say amnesia, especially electrically stimulated amnesia, is temporary. So, um, But it is the Cat Club, and it's in the telephone book on 13th Street, darlings. It's October 2nd. It's coming back to me. A Wednesday, Wednesday at uh, 10 o'clock at night. Um, I don't remember the price of the tickets. Well, anyway, Mummy is going to be doing a program there, and she wants to meet all of her viewers, all of you who've written letters, and all of those who haven't written letters. Just a second. Michael, darling, what is it? It's, no, I don't, I don't know what it is. Someone's saying six, someone is saying ten, someone's saying a hundred dollars. By the way, I went to see Follies. Two fifty. I went to Follies last night for a hundred dollars a ticket. Um, Carol Burnett was worth it. Liliane Montevecchi should be put to sleep. Anyway, darlings, um, we're breaking, I think, for a commercial or something. Another man has been struck by lightning over there, I see. Um, anyway, we'll be back, or is that the end of the program? They're, they're signaling that it's all over, that Mummy's finished. Um, darlings, Mummy will try and recover from her lightning accident just a few minutes ago, and we'll try and see you next week, all right? Um, that's all for the Sybil Brunchen Show. Please keep those letters and cards coming, darlings, especially if you've never written, and don't be afraid to enclose a $5 bill. Um, 
especially for mummy's new therapy of some sort. We'll see you next week. Au revoir, darlings. Au revoir. And don't forget, come to my show. Au revoir.